In 1925, a substitute teacher named John Scopes became the focal point of one of the most famous trials in American history. What was John Scopes placed on trial for? What was the outcome of this case? Tennessee passed the Butler Act in 1925. This law forbade public school teachers from teaching the theory of evolution in place of the biblical account of man's creation. The American Civil Liberties Union felt that this law was in violation of the United States Constitution. In order to test the law in court, they sought out science teachers who had been accused of violating the law. John T. Scopes was a football coach at Ray County High School in Dayton, Tennessee. While substituting for the biology teacher, he taught the chapter of the textbook which included the theory of evolution. After much convincing from the ACLU, he agreed to be placed on trial in order to challenge the Butler Act. He was officially charged with violating the Butler Act on May 5, 1925. He was placed under arrest, but immediately released after paying a $500 bail. When the case went to trial, both sides brought in prominent and well-known attorneys to argue their side of the case. The prosecution was represented by former Secretary of State and three-time presidential candidate William Jennings Bryan. Meanwhile, Scopes was defended by Clarence Darrow, one of the most well-known lawyers of the 1920s. The two sides argued for eight days. The defense suggested that the law was unconstitutional and that it violated not only teachers' individual rights, but their academic freedoms as well. The prosecution berated the public school system for attempting to teach children that humans were essentially no different than any other type of mammal. Brian ridiculed the idea that humans were descended from monkeys. At one point, Darrow even insisted that Brian take the witness stand. The two men battled back and forth over the factual merits of evolution, biblical stories, and religion in general. Meanwhile, the judge attempted to remind the jury that they were not there to deliberate the constitutionality of the Butler Act but merely to establish whether or not John Scopes had violated the law. Journalists from all over the nation reported on the trial as more than 200 newspapers covered the event. H. L. Mencken, the most famous journalist of the era, wrote several different articles in which he scoffed at the local residents, referring to them as yokels. The Scopes trial also became the first American trial to have an on-the-scene reporter giving live updates over the radio. After an eight-day trial, the jury reached its decision in only nine minutes. They found John Scopes guilty of violating the Butler Act, and he was fined $100. In today's currency, this would be a fine of well over $1,300. The case was eventually appealed to the Tennessee State Supreme Court, where the Butler Act was found to be constitutional. Scope's conviction was eventually tossed out on a technicality. The Scope's trial had several different ramifications. The trial had an immediate impact on public school classrooms. Throughout the 1920s and 30s, biology textbooks eliminated references to evolution in an attempt to avoid controversy. Additionally, the trial highlighted the growing religious fundamentalist movement in America as well as the changing American culture. Today, the Scopes trial is remembered as a pivotal moment in American history. The Ray County Courthouse is preserved as a historical museum, and each year, the townspeople of Dayton, Tennessee, reenact the famous trial.